No, Sean, I, I think Sean has slept on boxing skills because he, he doesn't punch straight. But yeah. he, Sean knows, Sean has a very good intuitive sense of like it's instinctual when to engage whenever the other guy doesn't want to then you see sean roughing him up and now the other guy thinks okay we're gonna brawl now sean's on the outside yeah he which means that he is the fighter with the initiative he's yeah. the one dictating he how it's gonna go he does. he does and and terrence can take advantage exactly if uh terrence does knock out porter does that put him above spence uh, in welterweight do you think or is he already no, he hasn't proven as much at welterweight, but I suspect he's the best welterweight in the world. But that's the whole thing. It's just you just you suspect that you don't have the evidence yet. Mm -hmm. If he if he has a better time with Sean than than Spence or Thurman for that matter, then that's a good piece of evidence. And then it becomes okay, who wants to make the fight and who doesn't? And if if Spence or Thurman or whoever never really wants to make the fight, then they won't fight him. And then we'll look at. What he did against Porter, if he wins, and if he wins more impressively than them, that's still a big if. Sean is being a little disrespected here in terms of people just assuming he's going to lose it by, by a wide margin. He really doesn't do that. But, but if that's what happens, then people will draw their conclusions that, that, that the PBC guys were using the street as an excuse. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about Canelo moving up to uh, Cruiserweight? Hold on, hold on. he didn't yeah. ask yet. Yeah, what? Hey, so they, they got rumors that Errol's going to be ringside for tomorrow's fight. Is there any kind of indica indication that this fight, is, is, if, if uh, Terrence is successful, that'll be the next one that Errol's coming to look, look if, to see firsthand? If, if Errol's there, you would hope so. What's the number one fight you can make in combat sports? Combat sports is Crawford and Spence. And think about this one. How many times in the history of boxing, in the history of boxing, has there been two guys in or around their primes, in or around their best weight division, who were both boxer punchers, meaning we've seen them win big fights on boxing ability, because Errol Spence outboxed Mikey. Oh, Mikey was moving up, everyone shut up. Mikey's very, very good. <laughs> and, and Errol Spence beat him behind the southpaw jab in his defense. We know he's a boxer puncher, right? They're both complete fighters. Spence high volume of punches, real punching power, hand speed, boxing skills, can play defense, uh, has shown heart, chin, stamina, like what a body, head, what, what do you want? And, and Crawford, plus he's a switch hitter and all that. How many times have guys with those styles, in their primes, in their best divisions, both been undefeated, both been top five pound for pound fighters in the world let me put it another way the winner of that fight would be the best pound for everyone would say that's the best pound for pound fight Agreed. how many times Agreed. has that happened in the history of boxing Trinidad. Trinidad was not a boxer puncher Trinidad was a destroyer Ike Corte Ike Corte was not a top five pound for pound fighter top ten Mosley De La Hoya De La Hoya wasn't undefeated the, the closest Man, you were is Sugar Ray Leonard <laughs> and Tommy Hearns but Sugar Ray had lost to Roberto Duran right so so like it, it has it's I'm just pointing out I'm not saying it's the best fight ever I'm saying it is a very rare maybe even a unique circumstance and if if Crawford beats Porter again let's not rush there because Porter's here for a reason right, right. if he does that's the best fight you can make in combat sports and if it doesn't happen fans are going to want to know why can Boots maybe beat them all one day who Boots we got to see Boots on the next level but Boots is very promising he has he has deep skill and the only question is does he have the level of cast which to, to now take it to the next level because usually guys who are skilled as Boots the, what separates the, them at, like from, what, do they turn out to be really good world-class fighters or great world-class fighters depends on if they have that next level speed, right? So against a lower level of fighter, Boots can look quick, and he is quick, but now we need to see him against that next level. He's obviously very skilled. Hey, you, I, my hat's off to him if he wants to move up for bigger challenges. Just because you win a belt doesn't make you champ. If he beats a world-class cruiserweight, that's a great accomplishment. It does not make him cruiserweight champion. If he is going to be fighting at cruiserweight and he's fighting Kovalev at light heavy, then the second best fight that can be made in combat sports is what? What If, if Crawford and Spence is the best, what's the second best fight that can be made? Canelo Benavides. Canelo and Better Biev. <laughs> Canelo and Better Biev is a perfect styles matchup. I think Canelo would be the favorite, to tell you the truth. But I want to see it. I want to see him beat a light heavyweight in his prime with a with you know better BF style, which would be 
Better BF just wants you to stand there so he can come and get you. Canelo just wants you to come to him so he can counter. It's like Vasily Jirov and James Tony back in the day at Cruiser. It would be guaranteed fight of the year. Max, uh, I remember when you were talking about Godzilla Kong and you said that Godzilla's like 30 stories high and Kong's only like two. Right. But your argument for Pacquiao being better than Mayweather all time is that Pacquiao was a champ at what 115 oh you're paying attention 112. Yeah. <laughs> 112 he was the lineal champion so, at 112. Well, so wouldn't that then kind of that argument not no, make sense talking, like the smaller guy against for, the bigger guy no we're talking <laughs> pound, we're talking pound for pound the point is that that what they've done with king kong and godzilla is made a pound for pound fight they blew up king kong to godzilla size so you could see who'd win pound for pound okay right <laughs> Pacquiao is not going to beat Floyd. He's a naturally smaller fighter. But the fact is, and boxers have the advantage over the sluggers usually, right? But Pacquiao, and we're going to end it right over here, guys. Yeah, for sure. We're going to have to cut it off at some <laughs> point. Pacquiao, when you, what's going on? When you talk pound for pound, if you, you don't start your career at 112, you win your first lineal championship at 112. And then you move up. 112, 115, he didn't make every stop, but right. a lot of them. 112, 115, 118, 122, 126, 130, 135, 140, 147, 154. And he won belts in a lot of those divisions and cleaned out some of them and was legit, like really the only legitimate four division champion in the history of boxing is Manny Pacquiao. No one else has really been the champion of four separate weight classes. There's always been a belt here or a belt there. Pacquiao's the only one to do it. So when you do all that, even if you're not as invincible as someone else on your best day, when you take the weight of all his accomplishments, you can make a good argument that Pacquiao is pound for pound better than Floyd. But what's interesting about Floyd is when he says TBE, he's not talking about in the ring. He said someone else can have that. He's talking about playing the whole game. And he's probably right. If you want to talk about because in the ring, he's one of the 10 best ever, Floyd, and one of the three best pure boxers ever, along with Purnell and Willie Pep. And then out of the ring, he, he, he minimized risk, made half a billion dollars, whatever he did. He played the game better than anyone else. In terms of in-ring accomplishments, Pacquiao is probably the guy with the best argument against Sugar Ray Robinson. Appreciate you, Max. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you.